Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question as we begin here today, which basically means I pretty much know the answer to your question before I even ask it. And that is, how many times have you made efforts to talk about differences between yourself and that narcissistic person only to conclude this is a futile effort? I try and I try to discuss our differences and there can be conflicts or strains that might be there. And every time that I do so, I just feel like I'm running into a brick wall. These, these people won't change. They won't make adjustments. They simply have such a closed-minded and stubborn way of thinking, a stubborn approach toward life that they won't adjust. <laughs> In other words, narcissists have a lack of insight. One of the uh, defining features or one of the most telling features of narcissism is their very low self-reflection skills. When you deal with narcissists and their strains and differences that need to be addressed, what you'll find or what you'll run up against is their mindset that says, I don't even want to admit that I've done anything wrong. You've done things wrong, but not me. Or they, uh, you'll also run into the notion where it's like, I cannot, I will not say the words, I need help. You need help, but not me. As a result, they're clueless about the ways that their behaviors and, and uh, attitudes will negatively impact other individuals, or perhaps they just don't care how they impact other people. They're prone to spouting opinions and making observations without uh, examining uh, or using any kind of logic. They're basically emotionally triggered. They're very self-serving in the way that they think about whatever's in front of them. And as a result, when it comes time to say, we need to adjust, we need to change, we need to make some, uh, some, uh, take some things in a different direction. It's like, you're talking to the wrong person. That's how they think toward you. Now you need to do it, but not me. Now, what I want to do is I want to zero in on eight of some of the most common signs that a, a narcissist cannot and will not change, that they have such low insight and low self-reflection that change and adjustment doesn't happen. Um, and as I go through these, I'm hoping you can uh, kind of check them off to see exactly how many of, of these uh, fit your circumstances. First and foremost, one of the things that narcissists will do is they won't just dismiss your concerns or your perspectives. They'll actually ridicule you. So when you come towards a narcissist and say, hey, look, there's something that I'd like to talk about. There's something that just isn't making sense. Let's talk this thing through. Instead of saying, okay, what do you have on your mind? They're going to uh, come back immediately with those uh, derisive kinds of remarks like, this is stupid, or where'd you come up with a dumb idea like that? And immediately, it's their way of letting you know, if you think that I'm interested in making any kind of adjustments, you're talking to the wrong person. A second sign that they will not change is they have an inflated sense of their own uniqueness. It's like when you talk with them about difficulties or strains or uh, conflicts, they operate with a mindset that says, well, you're just not as knowledgeable about these things as I am. Clearly, you don't see things well like, <laughs> well, me. And so they, they have such a sense of, of self-importance and they're very impressed with who they are. And you can be looking at some of their behaviors that are just way off base, but it's like, well, if you're seeing something that's off base, it's because you're looking from the wrong angle. This is me we're talking about, and I'm, I'm unique. I'm special. A third sign that they will not change is they have a deep habit of blame shifting. Let's suppose that there has been something that's very obvious that needs to be discussed. There's been a bad argument or some blunders have been made. 
rather than saying, ooh, uh, I need to look at this and I know that I contributed to this and uh, why don't we put our heads together so we can figure out how to move on from here. Instead, narcissists will, uh, will just more or less imply, well, if, there's, if, there, if there is anything uh, that's wrong here, it certainly wasn't my fault. What did you do? What are the circumstances? What kind of historical uh, scenario here uh, is, is causing this? You know, what did other individuals do to set this whole thing up? And I just happened to be an unfortunate uh, bystander in all of this. They simply can't say, you know, I, I need to look at myself. That there's always someone else to blame, which implies, too, that they're in the victim's mentality. Now, a fourth sign that narcissists won't change is they have a strong, overpowering need to be in control, even when it's not even necessary. And I'm not just talking about control over uh, fixed circumstances like you know what time we're going to do things or uh, how my procedures are going to be, although, of course, uh, that's part of it. But I'm talking about control with respect to thoughts and ideas. There's a certain way to think. There's a certain agenda that people are supposed to maintain, opinions that you ought to have. It's like, no, we, we need to do things my way. And basically, what they're really saying is, I need to protect myself from morons like you. And when they have that tight need for control, that uh, implies an impenetrable nature, which implies also change is not likely to happen. Now, a fifth indicator of this sign that they will not change is narcissists tend to seek out only people who will prop them up. They don't like diversity. They don't like differences of perspectives. They want yes people around them. And so what they'll do is they may take their concerns to somebody and say, hey, you know, thus and such happened. Here's my perspective. What do you think? And they're very happy when someone will come along and say, oh, great master, you're, you're the one that knows everything. It's like, yeah, I kind of thought so. They only want people who are going to agree. And rather than saying, I'd like to hear from somebody that's looking at it from a different angle, it's like, why would I need to do that? And as a result, it becomes a self-reinforcing style of communication that gets them nowhere in a forward direction. A sixth sign that these individuals refuse to change is that in general, they're not just skeptical, but they're cynical. Skepticism means that you're willing to weigh things out, the pluses and minuses in a careful uh, kind of way. Cynicism means that you're wanting to weigh things out, but you have an attitude of pessimism that goes along with it. They easily can find things that are wrong. Well, the reason is this, is I don't like that. Or they, uh, they, they think adversarially when it's not even necessary. The cynicism that they bring to the equation uh, sets them up to have an already negative expectation of how things are going to unfold. And as a result, adjustments are not made. A seventh indicator that they will not change is they can create drama. And then they blame you for not responding well to that drama. For example, they may yell at you. They may accuse you. They may be very disruptive or non-cooperative. And then when you come along and say, hey, this isn't working for me, then they can come along and say, oh, so you just can't get along with anybody, can you? <laughs> so it's like, no, what I'm trying to say is there's a disruptive feature here, and I'd like for us to do something about that. It's like, yeah, this proves why I just can't work with you. You're always complaining about something. So they set up the very thing, and it's the ultimate gotcha game. And then when you come back, it's like, man, see how problematic you are? Therefore, I don't need to adjust. You do. And then an eighth indicator that narcissists won't change, and that is, you'll notice that they tend to stay with the same maladaptive behaviors over and over. How many times have you thought, this happened six weeks ago, this happened eight months ago, this happened 15 years ago, I've been, I've been dealing with this for so long, and I'm thinking, well, is today going to be the day that it's going to change? And the answer is, well, probably not, because they just keep doing the same thing over and over. Uh, the old definition of insanity, expecting different results, but you're not going to get different results when you try to talk with them about it. So these are some signs that say these people indeed do have low insight. They have low self-reflection uh, skills, and as a result, the change is not going to happen. Now, a question that I have for you, and, and I, I want you to think this thing through very carefully, and that is, do you participate in the narcissist's denial and lack of insight by arguing with them? Do you participate by pleading your case with them only to find yourself 
tied up in knots from the inside out. And that can be your lack of insight if you continue to do that. Uh, again, I go back and say, I'm, I've talked to so many people that will say, well, I, I just keep uh, having the same problems and we just don't get anywhere. And yet they describe how they, uh, they uh, plead their case and they try to make their arguments. And it's like, well, why are you doing it again? And it's like, you know, I, I think I need to adjust. That being the case, I'm hoping you can have a, a sense that says, well, somebody in this equation needs to be self-reflective. Somebody needs to apply insights so adjustments can be found. Let's look at what that would require. First, uh, people with insight and change capabilities are open to learning. Uh, you've heard me say before, I hope that you and I can each be lifelong learners. Second, uh, uh, people who can change and adjust, uh, adjust appreciate the significance of context. You know, there are times when we need to know, you know, what's the context of what's going on here? What are some of the contributing factors? And they like to enter into that kind of space. They like to be challenged with a broader thinking and a consideration of nuance. In addition, insightful individuals will are, are quite willing to just pause and reflect. Let me pull back. Let me think things through. Let me take a little bit of time out. I, I need to just cogitate on whatever it is that's going on here. Narcissists tend not to have the patience for that. In addition, people with insight will proactively seek other individuals who might have different thoughts. In their conversations, uh, they, they seek people who will talk with them about it. They read things uh, that will challenge their thinking. They're able to be uh, comfortable in the presence of uncertainty. Sometimes people uh, won't change because it's like, I don't want to introduce anything that, uh, that I don't quite understand. And so they just have to have that tight agenda. And certainly individuals who can change can appreciate the distinction between conformity and harmony. Narcissists want you to conform, and as a result, they won't harmonize. They won't allow for differences, even as we learn to blend. In order to change, in order to have adjustments, you have to have certain ingredients like humility and empathy. I just mentioned patience and inclusion. And those are characteristics that are in short supply with a narcissist. So when narcissists will, uh, will imply to you just through their behaviors and attitudes, I'm not going to change, then I'm hoping you can at least uh, move forward thinking, well, I'm going to use my insight to respond wisely to that person's lack of wisdom. Now, I hope that videos such as this can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. Hit the notification bell that goes along with it. We're going to keep more videos coming in your direction. I know that there are times when it would be helpful for you to receive some form of therapy. And you know that I've been sponsored for years now by the online therapy service, betterhelp.com. It's become popular and, and uh, effective and affordable. And so if that's a need that you would have, I would encourage you to go beneath our uh, uh, the video here to the link that we have, and it'll take you straight to their uh, people who have uh, the licensed professional therapists that uh, can you can uh, select from. In addition, I have my therapeutic courses, and uh, these are very extensive. It's like signing up for an online class. Each course has multiple videos and uh, and written documents that go with each video, plus guided questions, and uh, it can be quite helpful in uh, guiding you through some of the issues you have. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills. This is me about establishing good boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite those controllers. We have my webinars that have already been presented, also my podcast. We have our website with lots of articles, my books, plenty of resources. Okay, I, I know that it's so frustrating when you think, well, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to adjust. I want to have insight. And the narcissist says, well, you need to change and you need to have insight because I sure don't. Okay, know what you're dealing with and recognize that they have so many elements in place that they just cannot go into that space with you. But as you accept that and move forward with your own healthy initiatives, I'm hoping it will take you to a place where they can't go. And that is a place where you have steadiness and especially that you're able to move into a place of personal peace.